Welcome everyone. In today's lecture, we are going to continue our journey uh, towards decomposing complex problems into simpler problems. And we will see something very important in helping us towards that kind of decomposition. That key idea is the idea of functions. Now, functions are something that you would have studied in school mathematics. So we will take a look at mathematical functions, but we will also take a look at some built-in functions that Python provides that really make our task as programmers very easy. And using these built-in functions, we will start our first steps towards writing some interesting Python programs. To begin with, our programs will be very simple, but we will gradually make use of functions to write big programs. And we will do that by breaking them into smaller parts, each of which will be handled by a specialized function. So let's start by taking a look at some familiar programs. These programs are very complex. You have all used web applications and you have all used mobile applications. So if we were to try and understand how these complex programs actually work, that would be a difficult task. So we have earlier introduced this terminology of abstraction. And the idea of abstraction is to take something complex and try and think about it in simple terms. Basically come up with an, a simple mental model that captures the most interesting things about this complexity. And so what we're going to try and do is come up with a very simple but very high level abstract representation of these complex programs. Here is how we can think about these programs abstractly. So in both these types of applications, you have something going on on the screen. Various kinds of elements, display elements, text boxes, drop-down menus, buttons, and so on. And the user can interact with some of these graphical elements. For example, in the web browser, they can maybe type some address. Or they can click a button, uh, maybe to close the browser, or long press, or otherwise interact with the elements on the screen. So there are some commands that the user can issue. Now, the way we can abstractly think about what the program is doing is it's taking both these pieces of information, the current screen and whatever the user has done uh, to interact with that screen, and it's doing some complex calculation depending on what the purpose is. So for example, if the user has entered a website in the browser, then this complex calculation will involve fetching information from some remote server. In contrast, if uh, the application is uh, playing some game, then as the user clicks something, then the game engine decides, for example, what its move should be. So this could be a very complex calculation indeed. But the end result of this complex calculation is the next screen. And now, of course, this next screen becomes the current screen and the whole process repeats. So the mental abstraction, the simplification of these complex programs can be this kind of a picture. You have a current state of your program. The user provides some commands. We compute something to produce the next state of the program. And then we just repeat the cycle again and again. We can abstract this picture even more by just saying, well, essentially, there is some calculation. We feed it some inputs not necessarily from two different sources, but from some number of sources, it produces an output. In the program, we then feed this output back as part of the input, but this 
A simple abstraction is what we are going to work with. Now, if you ask any mathematician, do you know what something like this is called, where I have something that I feed into and then I perform some calculation and it produces an output, they will immediately say, yes, I know what you're talking about. You are talking about a mathematical function. So in school level textbooks, you would have seen some sort of notation like this. We say there's a mathematical function f which takes inputs from some set A and it produces an output that belongs to some set B. Now there are two very, very important properties that a mathematical function must satisfy. So let's take a look at those properties.